Hold on to your toilets and dispose of your panties because we have the latest creation from acclaimed director Bong Joon-ho. Yes, Parasite was the winner of this year's Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, so we're going to take a deep dive into its cryptic ending and explain some of the mysteries as we go. So join me as I butcher pronouncing several Korean names because here we go. Although Parasite is the story of a family who slowly manipulates and exploits another, it's really the story of Ki-woo Kim. Although you may think Kai Tech is the protagonist, it's actually Ki Woo who goes by his English name Kevin. Kevin is the only character in the story who changes as the result of the events at the park home. But to understand this change and how it fits into the ending, we must first look at the beginning. Kevin lives in the basement with his struggling family who can't seem to make ends meet. They're all unemployed and have to resort to folding pizza boxes in order to make a living. It's only when Kevin's friend Min arrives that he offers Kevin a job. He tutors a rich family's daughter but has decided to go study abroad. He knows Kevin could use the money, so why doesn't he take his place? It would, however, require him lying about his credentials, and he even gets his sister who's good at design to forge his documents. Kevin accepting this position is what sparks the story. It's what starts the eventual destruction of not one, but three families, all of whom leech off each other like parasites, albeit in different ways. He's tired of being poor and concocts a plan to slowly leech off the parks by hiring each member of his family, no matter what it takes. He first gets his sister an interview with Mrs. Park to be her son's art instructor, which his sister, Jessica, then uses to her advantage by telling her her son has schizophrenia and will need art therapy in order to overcome a traumatic episode that happened when he was in grade one. We'll get to that in a bit. The Kims then up the stakes by planting panties in Mr. Park's car in order to fire the valet driver, a move which allows Jessica to suggest her father as the new valet. And finally, the most brazen of the plans, they physically endanger the life of the maid by triggering her allergies to peaches and passing it off as tuberculosis as you do. Each time the Kim family digs deeper into the parks, it only endangers not only themselves, but others. They are a parasite that the longer they dig in, the worse it gets for everyone. But the title of the film not only relates to the Kim family, but also to Moon Gwang, the maid, her husband, and even Mrs. Park. As in real life, parasites come in various shapes and forms. Take for example the remora fish who leeches off of sharks, providing the shark with valuable cleaning and smaller parasitic removal. It's a symbiotic relationship. Just like the Remora cleans, so too does the maid. In return, she uses the scraps from the Park family to feed her husband who lives in the underground bunker beneath the house. A bunker which the Parks know nothing of. You see, Moon was the maid to the original owner and architect of the home, Nam Gong, a man who built the bunker in the event of a North Korean nuclear attack. He kept this a secret during the sale of the house, leaving Moon the only person to know of its whereabouts. That's how before the Parks came, she was able to move her husband, a man hunted by loan collectors, into the basement. Unlike the Kims, Moon and her husband treat the parks with reverence, grateful for what they have been given. In return, they treat them with respect. RESPECT! Moon. We see this when Mr. Kim learns that the maid's husband has been sending Mr. Park positive messages of thanks through Morse code. Whereas Moon and her husband are the more benevolent parasites, the opposite is true of the Kims. They have no honor and no respect for the Parks. They lie, cheat, and steal their way to feed off them as much as possible. In fact, there's an entire scene where they are literally feeding off the Parks food and drink. The Kims as parasites are also encapsulated in the beginning scene where they are literally fumigated by the bug exterminators, Mr. Kim even saying to leave the window open so they get free fumigation. We have the Park children who, by the very nature of them being dependent on their parents, can be seen as parasites, and even Mrs. Park. Throughout the movie we see her dozing off, like here and here. It's only until later in the film, during one of the strangest scenes, we find out why Mr. Park has her dependent on drugs. As he continues to use her, she begs for more drugs. Mr. Park is a parasite off the capitalist system. System, reaping millions while others like the Kims go poor. But perhaps what is most ironic about Mr. Park is his monetary gain off of augmented reality technology. Mr. Park runs an AR business called Another Brick. Augmented reality is when you take elements from the real world and combine it with the fake virtual one. Almost every character in this movie has both real and fake elements, whether it be the Kims faking their relationship to one another, or even the maid hiding her husband. At its core, the film explores how far we're 
willing to go to help those we love, with Bong Joon-ho arguing that there is a line when things go too far, and crossing that line comes with a cost. This is personified through Mr. Park, who tells Mr. Kim that he doesn't like people who cross the line. In this scene, he's referring to one of his workers delving into his personal life, but the subtext here is what's important. Park mentions this not only once, while he's in the car being driven home, but later right before the birthday party massacre. One could argue that the theme of Parasite is helping one's family at the expense of others leads to one's own destruction, which is exactly what happens in this film. About midway through the film, everything goes south for the Kims. Letting the former maid back into the home begins a series of events that jeopardizes the Kims' plans, resulting in the maid finding out about their scheme and threatening to tell the Parks. This is the first time we see the Kims resort to violence in order to maintain their charade, with Mrs. Kim kicking Moon down the stairs eventually culminating in her death, a death which spurs her husband to go full crazy. The Kims eventually lock Moon and her husband in the bunker, but arrive home to find it completely submerged by the torrential downpour. They have lost everything. It's here that Kevin finds the Scholar's Stone almost magically floating in the water. It's this stone that is the embodiment of Kevin's greed. If you remember in the beginning, Min gives Kevin the stone as a gift from his grandfather, and it's supposed to bring any family who possesses it material wealth. The beginning of his troubles correlate with the handing over of this stone, so when Kevin sees the stone floating in the water, almost beckoning him, he knows he has to get rid of it. He brings it to the bunker, but is attacked by Moon's husband and is literally beat by the rock, a metaphorical symbol of his own greed. It makes sense then, when he awakens with a brain condition that makes him laugh, that the irony of it all is the thing that was supposed to bring him wealth ended up making him lose everything. He laughs when he's injured in the hospital, when being sentenced, and also at his sister's grave. Sometimes life is funny like that. With Moon dead and her completely mad husband on the loose, he makes his way to the birthday party where the film reaches its tragic climax. Jessica is stabbed by Moon's husband wanting revenge for the death of his wife, and Park's boy faints at the sight of this man, who he always believed was a ghost. Earlier in the film, Mr. Mrs. Park tells Mrs. Kim that when her boy was in first grade, he went down to get some cake and saw this man. Not creepy at all. This traumatic experience caused him to have a seizure and almost die. This is likely what also happens to the boy in this scene. Chaos breaks loose and Mrs. Kim and Moon's husband duke it out while Mr. Kim tries to save Jessica. Moon's husband is killed by a sausage sword, yes it sounds weird saying that, when Mr. Park comes to retrieve the car keys which are buried under his body in order to take his son to the hospital. It's here that one of the most surprising turns of the film takes place. Mr. Kim, upon seeing Mr. Park cover his nose at the smell of Moon's husband, a man who probably doesn't smell good being cooped up downstairs for years, stabs and kills Mr. Park in front of everyone. This turn has both a metaphorical and motivated answer. Motivated in the sense that Bong Joon-ho has set up Mr. Kim being ridiculed for his smell throughout the film, a smell of the lower class. When the Kims are hiding under the table, Park laments to his wife about the smell of Mr. Kim. Park equates it to the smell of an old radish or a boiled rag. Mrs. Park even has to unroll her window to avoid it. Park goes on to say that people who ride the subway, in his mind, poor people, have that same smell. And to top off this insult, it's done in front of his whole family. Mr. Kim is being ridiculed for the one thing he hates most about himself, the one thing he wants to fix. Not his smell, but the fact that he's poor. This is why it's so weird for Mr. Kim when he finds Moon's husband, who looks up to Mr. Park with tremendous respect. How can he be so reverent for a man who doesn't even know who he is? In fact, when he says, hello Mr. Park, Park's response is, you know me? This confluence of emotional events, his daughter being killed, Mr. Park's reaction, eventually make him crack and stab him to death but it's perhaps the metaphorical explanation that is the more interesting of the two. Mr. Kim, the parasite, has fed all it can off Mr. Park, the host, having bled him dry, needing to find a new host. But it also speaks to the relationship between labor and capital. Not to get to Karl Marx, but Kim is the physical representation of labor that is not respected by the owning bourgeois capitalists. Throughout the film, the Parks treat their servants as objects, easily replaceable within the framework of the capitalist 
capitalist system in which they operate. And it begs the question, in a system that is exploitative of the working class, is it okay for that class to exploit the rich, even if it is by immoral means? And if you do end up exploiting it, where is the line? Lying, manipulation, violence, murder? Where do you draw it? The final moments of the film show us the aftermath of the climax. Jessica, Mrs. Moon, and Mr. Park have all been killed, with Mr. Kim hiding away in the bunker, forced to live out the rest of his days. It's only when Kevin sees the Morse code of his father communicating with him that he completes his character arc. He vows that he will be a legitimate player within the capitalist system, go to school, get a job, and accumulate enough wealth to eventually buy the home so he can free his father. This switch to becoming legitimate also means throwing away the rock, which he puts in a river. We do see Kevin reunited with his father, but did this actually happen? Is this not simply a visual representation of how Kevin thinks his plan will work out? If you remember in the gymnasium scene, Kevin's father tells him that the best plan in life is no plan, because as soon as you make a plan, it never works out that way. If plans never work out, what does this scene say about our ending? Will Mr. Kim be reunited with his family, or will he be forced to live the rest of his days beneath the crushing weight of a multi-million dollar home? That is for you to decide. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to hear about what you thought about Parasite in the comments below. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe with the bell on for more Think Story videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.